Uh, welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. And what we up, got a up? special one, man. We have guests here. If we can go around the room, uh, everybody introduce yourself. Myself. Well, I'm trying. I'm Ryan's brother. Or I'm Ryan's brother. I'm Ryan's sister. <laughs> we, already up, we already you lying. We already lying. She's already lying. Right there. Right? She's been drinking before. I'm Debbie. I'm there. And I'm Monique. I'm a friend of Ryan's. And Monique, you've been on the show before. I have. Yeah. We just wasn't, we wasn't talking about women before. So, you know, <laughs> this is a new territory that you get to scale. Oh, yeah. A I'm and ready. Y'all have all seen the video, I, I would hope. Uh, it was from Olivia Alexa from YouTube. And it was 30 lies that she tells you. Um... I'm going to go through them and I want everybody's opinion. I'm going to try my best to be moderator here, host, period. But, you know, I might jump in too because everybody's got opinions. And like I've told y'all before, and I'm telling y'all in front of the audience, hey, speak your truth. And um, we're going to start with the first one. He's just a friend. Now, y'all as women may not have all used that phrase, but I know y'all have heard that phrase. And from what Olivia was saying, that's not always true. If, if she says he's just a friend, that means that she's got him on deck in case you mess up. Tell me, what do y'all think about that? Debbie, you shaking your head. You go first. Yeah, I have I have a male friend that I have been almost, I can't say best friends because, of course, Van's my best friend. Um, but I've been friends with him since I was 14. He is like a brother to me. There is no way, no way. And, yes, he is just a friend. And I barely see him in person. Text here and there, once in a blue moon. Facebook, once in a blue moon. But nothing like that. Mm -mm. I never had a friend that's just a <laughs> nope. Well, I've had male friends my entire life, so most of my friends have been male. So, yeah, no. And they're not yeah. just a friend. No, they're actual friend brothers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I agree with them. I mean, my best friend is a male. We actually just came from the spa and lunch today, <laughs> you know, and he's. He's married. His wife knows me. His kids. My guy knows him. Like, um, I think it depends on the type of woman you're dealing with. If she's a liar or this and that, she is going to tell you he's just a friend and he lies. I mean, she's lying, but, but that's not the case with all of us. It's just, it's not a blanket statement. Good to know. Kaz, you got an opinion? Mm. I think, honestly, truthfully, the longer you've been with the woman that you're with, there are signs. There, there, there are signs that you can tell that there's that. He's just a friend, oh baby, you. Uh -uh. There are signs. <laughs> there are signs, and and I don't care how subtle. There's a sign, and so I believe. I believe uh, women women can have friends. I believe yes. that. I would say I believe that because I've been in that boat. So I, I know it can happen. Now, before I, I get Big Show's opinion, I do want to say that Monique had a point earlier. It was the video was very generalized. And, yeah. and that's part of the reason why, you know, I've got this forum today, because we are breaking down not just what she says, but the stereotypes behind it. Show, you got an opinion on this first one? I just agree with everybody. I, you know, I think it depends on the relationship status of you and, and, or the male and the female. Um, like, you know, Susan can have as many male friends as she wants. I'm never going to be worried ever. So, you know, I'm, 
I really depends on their relationship status, I think. Okay. I think it's also, you know, depends on, you know, if you're married or you have a significant other and you have this male friend that isn't, you know, becoming a friend of your husband as well, you know, work friends are different. But if you just have this male friend that your husband doesn't know him that well and you claim that, you know, he's just my friend, then, you know, that's a little different because that becomes a little disrespectful. I, I think it should definitely integrate the friendships between, you know, the the male friend and the husband or the boyfriend at some point. But that's what I mean by, that's one of the things I mean by signs. Yeah. That's a sign. Speaking of signs, number two was, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Now, Shoot, if, if you got to say it, <laughs> don't that mean that you're a little touched? You know, I, let me speak on that real quick, because I think with a woman, unfortunately for the woman, there I think there are multiple sides of that, because she can see something that we could be doing off, and we try to bring something on to her, and she's like, I ain't crazy. I know what I saw. I know what I heard, I know what I see, I know what I read, whatever the case is. So I, I think there's multiple prongs to crazy. Crazy, though, I don't think crazy always means lunatic. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, damn, this is going to be a real short I show. Well, well, no, but well I, I don't know. think crazy I mean, is um, hard to not spot. So, you know, even though they may say they're not crazy, I mean, I'm sure you see some some signs that maybe there is some craziness there. Oh, there are signs. There are signs yeah. in all of us. So, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. We I think we're all a little crazy at times. Well, Depends on the situation. Oh, no. no I would never you, say I'm not crazy. That would mean <laughs> I would never say you're not crazy either, sis. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, number three was I like you as a friend. Does that immediately get you stuck in the friend zone? I don't think I've ever said that. Uh, I, I mean, I would say so. I mean, I, I think it's pretty explanatory. I like you just as a friend. Nothing more. I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so, so and, far. And as men, we hate to hear that. Yeah, we do. But so far, she's two for three. Um... I think I think, I think, I've, picking, I think I've, I've heard that before, but I didn't care because you know I didn't want anything else out of the friendship either. So, I mean, to nitpick about it, I like you as. I think that's a little think swing here and there either when it comes to the guy, especially. So, I don't know. I like you. I don't know. Just the like part. I think there are other words that can be chosen. And well, when I, I when know, I heard it, I, I was like, as opposed to what an enemy. I mean, what are we talking about here? No, because I think usually if a woman is saying something like that, that means you, me, showing signs that we are looking to go a little bit beyond that 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 zone. Yeah. So she's pointing it out that okay, break. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be honest. Most men in that situation, when we're first meeting a girl, if we're single, that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's not bullshit. That's what we're trying to do. Yep. Wouldn't you? I would rather be straightforward and say, "I only like you as a friend," and you know, versus stringing you along. Of course. That's true. And then it depends how consistent and you want to be as the male to keep going. Oh, it also well, could also be, I like you as a friend as far as I don't want to get in a relationship right now or that's just not and then eventually maybe it becomes more than that but right now I just like you as a friend you know like I don't want anything more than that all right now number four I really want to get into because um this one is a little different and we've heard it all before as men you know you might have upset or pissed off your your woman, your significant other, whatever, but you hear, I'm fine. No, she is not fine. No. And I think y'all yeah. all, all got to agree with that. Yeah. No, women, no. women 
that all the time. That, that is the one statement she made that I can honestly say is general. We tend to do that. We're conditioned to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I ever heard I'm fine. My my version of I'm fine here is usually the silent with the peripheral look. Or as cat women would say, the peripheral look. The deadly you know silence. You, 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 you all right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that I'm, that I'm fine is a killer. Mm -hmm. oh, but see, I'm, I'm the dumb husband. You tell me you're fine, I'm going to be like, peace, cool, I'm going to go watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 make me try to 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 learn what's wrong. I'm asking you what's wrong. If you don't but want to you tell know me, what? Then we'll keep it pushing. real talk. That's actually sometimes the better way to go because if you press the matter, the beast might come out. True, but <laughs> like I just using me and Susie's relationship, I'm not confrontational. I'm not. She is, and she'll tell you in an instant. It's really hard to argue with someone that doesn't argue back. Ooh, I like that. I mean, I just I just look at her and be like, okay, whatever. She'll calm down. We'll talk three days later. We'll either agree or we'll agree to disagree. She ain't divorcing me. I ain't divorcing her. We ain't going to prison. We ain't killing each other. So we're good. Right. Yeah. What's that phrase I always use? I'm too old to break in a new model. So, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think also it could mean that. You know, she she's she doesn't feel safe in whatever she's feeling at the moment to be able to express that. You know, whoever she's, you know, doing this with or saying this to, she doesn't have us. She doesn't feel safe to express whatever it is that she's not fine about. And I'll go further. To, I'll tack on to what she just said. I mean, that's true. I do think when you're in a relationship with someone who communicates well, you might get I'm fine for me every here and then because, you know, I just don't feel like explaining. But if I'm comfortable with you, I'm going to say, no, this is what's going on. This is how I feel. Can we talk about it? If you are with a woman and you consistently get I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. She checked out. She don't mm -hmm. even want to be in a relationship anymore. Absolutely. Mm. Now, number five. Um, and I'm gonna call it 5A because I don't know if y'all noticed in the video, she said number five twice. I catch that kind of stuff. Um, but this one, I had to laugh. You are the best I've ever had. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, Kaz. I don't know about you, Big Show. If I hear that mess, I'm going to laugh out loud because I'm going to assume that's a lie. I'm going to hope it's not a lie, but I'd rather you not even say anything because it will be in the back of my mind. Well, I'm let the lady speak on it first, and then I'm going to speak my piece about that. Okay. Well, I'm going to before they say anything, I'm going <laughs> to say it. I don't care. Uh, I think that that depends on uh, the confidence of the male, in my opinion. Yeah. Because if the male doesn't feel insecure, he doesn't need to hear he's the best. He already knows it. Even if he's not, he already knows. Because truthfully, the performance of the male versus the verbal, the the expression of the female will tell you whether you are the best or if the That's session, not... if the, well, no, 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 this, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. This is what I mean, because I know that I am a partner focused man. I focused on on the partner. That's true. I don't focus on me because if I want to be like I was in high school, five seconds done. Mm -hmm. I'm a partner focused man, so that's where my confidence comes from. I focus. You all give signs as to whether or not you is or is you or you ain't. Yeah. Well, I've never, I've never, I've never said that before. before. But uh, I've been telling him that since we were 16. So it's been 40 years. And uh, no. it, he, he, he always comes up with something new. 40 years. Comes up with something new. So can't get any better than that. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. And, you know, in in my head, the way I think about it, I don't know what another man is like. I only know what this man is like. So I don't care about any other dude. All I can do is be me. 
And if that ain't good enough for somebody, oh, well, get to stepping. Yeah, I've never said that before, so I can't. I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that I haven't had <laughs> experiences. I just, I've never said that before. Just, you don't need to lie. You just like. Yeah, just, I mean, even if it was the truth, I just never said it. Like, just, I don't. I don't think it needs really to be expressed anyway, verbally, right. outright like that. I think it again, it depends on the confidence of the guy. Cause you can be like, Oh, are you okay? Did you like it? Was that good? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Some weak ass I don't want to be the man whose ego I have to stroke like that. Like, there you go. That's why I've never I, said it exactly. Well, see, he doesn't ask. He'll he do doesn't need to. Different right. And I'll be like, right. whoa. I mean, that's his confidence. He doesn't need to ask. That's that's, that's right. where I was going with that. Yeah. You know, women need to feel secure in a relationship. You know, they don't need to raise another kid. That is so true. Been there, done that. Okay, now 5B. I'm sorry, I didn't see your text. <laughs> now, Never. this this works for men or women, though. I mean... Man, that goes you know damn too. well. I'm just saying. You've seen that text. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does that for real. Yep. But I don't even have an excuse. I have a reason. This thing right here picks up everything first. I have a watch, the phone. And the iPad and the, uh, the, the Mac. I got all the Apple stuff. This is the first thing that rings before anything else. If I don't catch whatever happens here first, done. I have to look at phones and stuff in order to get to get messages. If I don't respond when, when the watch goes off, I'm SOL. And then no. I get then I get in trouble. <laughs> if I'm at work. It takes me hours sometimes to respond, but I do see it. And I don't I, I think she I think she meant it more the context of maybe the guy, you know, caught up with her the next day or something. Hey, I texted you. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. see your text, that kind of thing. Mm -mm. From a guy, yeah. I would take that as a sign that she wasn't into me. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Or or the so woman I go date her or the woman is just a busy woman who has a life of her own and the guy is simply just trying to, oh, what's going on with you? I'll come you and answer my text. Uh, 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 uh. Well, true. Yeah. I mean, but that's a one-time thing. But if it's a if it's a pattern, you know, yeah. it's kind of mm -hmm. take the hint, dumbass. Okay, the Move pattern. On. Yeah, yeah. Hint. Monique, but when it's quiet, your sister, I was just about and to she say ignores that. your text. I feel like that's that's the easy one. I mean, consistency is key. If that's a one-off with somebody, like you said, it's no big deal. But if it's I'll be right back. My signs are going. All right. Off. Okay. All right. No, I mean, I expect a male to respond the same way I would if I'm talking to a man and he's, you know, days go by and you avoid my text. I'm going to take it as you're not interested either. You know what I mean? Like. So if you tell me you just missed it, I don't believe it after the second time, you know? How about number six? I'm not like all the others. This can be taken a couple of ways. Everybody says too. that. I've never said that. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, wait, you know what? I did say that. <laughs> I <did> remember <laughs> With him. I don't treat me like I'm the others because I'm not. Yeah. That was once, though. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, when mean, you say it that way, I mean, that changes the context. But see, mm -hmm. what she said to Kaz changes the context of what Olivia was saying in the video. She made it sound like I'm not all, I'm not like all the others. I'm more worthy. Um, the way Debbie made it sound is right hey, you know don't put me in the general population i'm different i'm supposed to be different i'm with you so same yeah. thing but taken two different ways we're all different none of us are alike mm, disagree <laughs> there are there are habits there are routines there are rituals that males have that females have and 
if certain rituals become a routine with your partner and it's a bad one, then that's where the bone may fall out of the closet. <clears throat> Otherwise, everyone is different, but we all have rituals and routines, bad habits. And if you live bad habits, multiple partners, and you're carrying baggage, it reveals itself. I can't lie. I think, I think we all itself. carry baggage to our yeah. next relationship. If you've reached a certain age, you've got baggage, period. There's no, no other way around it. Yeah, if you haven't killed yourself before you go into another relationship. Absolutely. I mean... There's a lot of healing that needs to be done sometimes before you move on to the next relationship. Gosh. Figuring out why, you know, or what you need to heal or why you put up with what you put up with or, you know, because you're just going to carry it. You just, and most of the times people just end up picking the same type of person because they don't heal. Because mm -hmm. it's what's familiar and comfortable. Mm -hmm. For sure. After us being separated for 18 years, it felt like we were just going to fall right into place. <laughs> and it did not happen that way. Oh, hell no. She last saw me, I was like 19. And so when we got back together in my 30s, she was expecting the dude that had the curl and that was 135 pounds with no tattoos and didn't smoke a cigarette. And then came back and yeah, things have changed. And when you left, I had no booty and I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, real quick. Uh, this is the Slightly Warped Podcast with Rick and Big Show. And we got guests on today talking about the 30 lies that she's guaranteed to tell you. We are breaking them down and we are discussing how much of it is really a lie, how much of it has some truth to it one way or the other. We are at... Uh, Number seven, I'm not looking for a relationship. This is another one of those ones that it really depends on the context, the situation, and all that. I think there are women that lie about that uh, because sometimes men can be, some men can be overbearing and difficult, um, and you're looking for any excuse. So that might not even be the only lie or the only excuse she gives him. So I think that is one that, that stands, that, that can hold water. I agree. She just don't want a relationship with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you can tell them no, you can say you're not interested. They they not listening. So that's just the next thing that rolls off the tongue. Debbie, Cass? I, I can't really answer that because I've been in a relationship really since I was 16. I had him and went into my first husband and then right right back to him. So I don't have that. I didn't have a bunch of dating experience beforehand. No party and no nothing. Don't want to. I just lucked out. Way to go, Cass. Rode that, rode that seven, boy. I walked up to New Jersey and said, <laughs> yo. <laughs> hey, as we get to number eight, this one, uh, I, I do want to break down a little bit more because right. it, it's I'm not looking, I'm not looking to get a man for money. Um, I, and I believe that there's all types of women out there that don't care how much a man makes and everything, but I just found it humorous because I used to know a girl. I want to say I was in my twenties and we, we just worked together. It wasn't a relationship thing, but she always talked about, she wanted to get with an athlete or somebody that had lots of money. And it just, it struck me odd. It's like, why are you working at this bullshit job trying to get a man with money when you should just be out there trying to get your own thing? And, you know, that was tucked somewhere in the back of my mind until I saw this here. And I'm like, well, wonder how that person's doing right now. 
Well, I just had that situation at work. She only um, got the job so she could try to find a doctor. She was a mm. 20-something-year-old girl, and she's dating a doctor who is 40 years older than her. Mm-hmm. It's and a lot of that is true, too. I mean, it can be in how you were raised. If you came up in a household where you had a mom who, you know, never worked and was always taken care of, and daddy was making sure she had every ring, every this, every that. I have a cousin that way. You know what I mean? Like, you see stuff like that, and you think this is the way that it is, even as you get older. Um, if up from a household where you have a mother and father who are consistently making you work. I come from a military household. I'm very militant. I'm very independent because that's what I saw growing up. Yeah, I'm I'm very independent too. However, I am old school. I mean, even in nature, it's it's the it's the male whatever animal it is that has the most or the most colorful bird that that the female is attracted to. So it kind of is normal i think for a woman to want a man to have to be able to take care of her okay. i mean at the time and that's that's how it was the woman stayed home and the men went out and worked. i mean to me that's how it should be now i didn't necessarily have that i've worked you know my entire life but i seen my dad you know be the person who brought home the money and took care of the house and you know there were roles you know so today is just a lot different you know this whole 50 50 thing i mean i guess but if I'm, if as a woman, if I'm, if I'm working and bringing in money, and then I also have to do laundry, cook meals, clean the house, I mean, what the hell? That's not fifty fifty. So I, I don't say anything. I don't. I, I think that would be truthful. Is, um, a lot of women probably do look for men that have money and can take care of them. If I, I had to do it all over again, I sure would. I think there are levels. You have the, you have the gold digger, but then you know. Yeah, that's the, that's different. Yeah. I think the independent woman, when she gets a man, is gonna at least want to have a man that is a producer in the relationship. That doesn't necessarily mean she's wanting a man with money. You know, he's gotta make a hundred K, two hundred K, five hundred K uh annually to to make her happy. But I, I think the 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 typical woman just simply doesn't want to have to be the caretaker for everything going on in her life, in a relationship. Doesn't mean she's a gold digger, doesn't mean she want money, but doesn't mean she wants to spend her next 20, 30 years working and she's literally doing every single thing going on and paying every single thing going on in, in, in the relationship either. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Men don't want somebody who just sits around and, you know, does nothing. Um, So I think it's, I I don't think there's anything wrong with standards. I don't knock people for wanting somebody who makes X amount of dollars. I I think that's perfectly reasonable. If they want to maintain a certain type of lifestyle or they want to live in this house or be able to take vacations, you 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 might not be able to be with somebody who only makes $20,000 a year. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You just know, you know, the type of person that you want to date. Damn, can you make twenty thousand dollars a year and survive these days? No, I, I especially, it. especially not, especially <laughs> not under a year. bridge. <laughs> yeah, so, so to say, I don't care about money at all. That's no, you'll yeah, never hear me. That's not real. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. I think it depends on the relationship status again. You know, like just using me and Susie, I handle all the federal. She handles all the state. We just keep it pushing. Mm-hmm. I like that phrase. Um. Number nine, I forgive you. Are we really forgiven, fellas? Depend yeah. the forgiven for what? Like forgiven to take out the trash? <laughs> yes. Well, the way Olivia put forgiving it in the video because you had was, a side chick, probably not. Just the way Olivia put it in the video was it's always back here. And I'm never gonna forget. Well, nobody I think forgets. that's both ways though. Nobody yeah. forgets. It's just if you're gonna truly forgive, that's it. Nobody forgets. And and I know nobody forgets, but at the same time, and again, this is from being a guy. I'm not a woman, so I can't speak from a woman's perspective, but it seems to me like a lot of time a woman is quick to pull something out from the book of the past 
especially in the heat of the moment. Mm-hmm. And, and that like doesn't elephants. tend to make things better. It makes things go south real fast. We are capable. She's probably forgetting. Go ahead. No, I said we are capable of weaponizing things where we haven't seen change. So I think, therefore, you wouldn't be forgiven. If there's something that's happened, one, like I'm not a person, like you said, cheating, I would never forgive that. So no, I'm just going to walk anyways. Um, But if there's something small that went on within our relationship and we got past it and I saw visible change, I don't weaponize those things. So we are capable of actually forgiving. But in the case that you are capable of actually changing and doing what it took to get us there. I think actions speak louder than words in all those cases. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know, I say I'll never do it again, but once you say, once you actually don't ever do it again, you know, but I think both sides will weaponize things in arguments. Mm-hmm. And it also depends on the relationship, you know, uh, a long standing relationship. I mean, you know, by the grace of God, me and Susie will be married 29 years this year, been together for mm-hmm. 31 um, you know, that, that shit takes a lot of hard work. Me forgiving her, her forgiving me, you know, me being an asshole, her being a bitch. I mean, it all it's it's all the same thing. We still love each other. But it's gotta work. It's a daily it it doesn't come easy. All right, I like that. Um, number ten was I'm not jealous of other women. Is this something that's true? Or is there a hint of jealousy in every woman? No. And I think that depends on how, again, safe you are with your guy and how well he makes you feel secure in the relationship. So if I'm jealous, it's because you're doing some bullshit over here. Um, You're not making me feel safe at all because you're flirting or you're being too friendly or you've been known to do this, you know, previously or whatever. But if my guy is pretty much, you know, making me feel very secure in the relationship and others I, I don't see jealousy everybody else it's also I mean, I know. security so you know some women can just be jealous for no reason because they're insecure with themselves right get jealous but if i see somebody like literally friday this one woman was just trying to make her moves <laughs> i was so aware it was hysterical i just <laughs> politely just put myself right into that place to let her know he is a t- he's taken you know but there was no jealousy yeah, i feel like the man should do that i feel like the no, man but he, i don't think he realized hard. it but i don't think he knows that's, it. that's well, I, I like the way you put that debbie sometimes we don't realize it. we don't care because we not we not out there looking so it's, it's good for the woman to step in like that and say hey he's taken uh, i think yeah i don't see how y'all couldn't know that well, woman he, he's, but we're just dumb men, Sue. Because yeah, <laughs> if you weren't with your woman, because, I think you would notice it. Because, pay attention to it. because the way I saw it is that the girl was just cracking jokes. And with Debbie with me, I just, I don't know. I don't know in my old age and in the fact that I ain't been out in the streets in, in, in years that my, my radar of gathering information was off but i just thought the girl was being silly and debbie said something and the way she said it i was like oh shit okay yeah and see i agree with cash but but the girl actually the girl dropped it I, i i honestly could not tell you what debbie did or said uh or the reaction i i honestly for me the the thing was we're at a hospital my daughter had had surgery so the last thing I'm thinking about is some girl throwing some words at me, uh, 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 whatever. And then if I remember right, she looked like a little kid anyway. So, you know, she looks like the age of one of my daughters. I'm like, nah. but whatever Debbie caught. Come on, she's like reaching over you. Oh, what can I do for you, sir? I was like, oh, please. You know what it was? She was, she was reaching. She was. Uh, we were getting condiments, uh, you know, barbecue sauce and all that shit. So they had these little cups at the hospital. So she's like, well, what do you want? To do? Would you want mayo? Do you want barbecue? And at first I thought she was a girl that was working the cafeteria. That's how much attention I was paying to her. So I was like, okay, well, while you fill that up, I'll fill this up. 
and I'm talking to Debbie, and then Debbie's like, uh, -uh. I don't know what she said, but the girl hit the brakes and said, okay, uh, you have a good day. I was like, okay, yeah, you too. Bye-bye. See you later. What did you say, Debbie? She had an empty cup, but she put it on his tray. And I said, oh, thank you. I've got that. Thanks. I'll get it for him. <laughs> she just walked away. But she was all over him. But see, I was going to say I agree with Kaz because, you know, it's not that we just don't see it. We're not looking for it to see it. Sometimes you have to look for something in order to see it. And if you're with that person that you're with, it, no matter how nice somebody's trying to be to you or whether they're flirting or whatever, you don't see it because you don't want to because you, you're you not interested. Yeah, well, man, back in the day, you you and me, we, we used to, that shit, that shit used to just kind of come up off on the side. You'd be like, okay, I caught that. I caught that. Yeah. I, I was blinded with science, boy. Me, ketchup, we, and barbecue sauce. Yeah, we, we, we got old, bro. We got old. But she caught it. Mm. Plus, when you're single, you're looking for that stuff. I mean, you know, your your radar is out. Yeah, yeah. More so. All right, number yeah. eleven on here was, um, and, and I guess she was talking to her man. He was out somewhere without her, and her quote was, "I hope you had a good time." She really doesn't mean that she hoped you had a good time. I've never done that. Yeah, that's um, like that. I, I feel like a lot of the things that she said come from angry women, <laughs> like young women, mm. not really young women. Yeah, angry or young, one or the other, or both. Yeah, young and angry. Yeah, 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 yeah. and insecure. Yeah, that's the word. Yep. Yeah. Funny that you should say that because number twelve, um, I won't get angry. <laughs> at dot dot dot. Uh, if it's a young, angry one, she probably will get angry. <laughs> and, 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 you know, just guessing from the panel that we have today, y'all pretty good at keeping you cool. But then again, y'all not the angry women. Yeah. Well, I but think they have the ability to get angry. I don't know. My oh, wife uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My I've, wife. My wife's a pistol with with uh, what's the, uh, the the fire gun with that flamethrower machine gun? That, yeah, no, that flamethrower. She's a pistol that can easily transform into a to a flamethrower. Well, every light has Italian. a switch. What do you expect? <laughs> I mean, like obviously knowing my sister all my life, and then knowing Mo over these past few years, they're strategic. They just don't fly off the handle. They're very strategic. Under the radar, they play chess. Huh? No, they they're that, not. They don't let you always, know. That wasn't always the case, you know. In my early twenties, no, you know, I was a hothead, but you know, you you definitely have to. I mean, you have to change at some point. But uh, I don't yeah. know. I'll take There's, the hothead. I think we're all hot. I'll, I'll take the hothead over strategic. Mm -mm. Nope. Yeah. I'll take the I think we're over. I, I would suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest that. Oh, no, I mean, no, no, no. I'm out of head because I spent most of my life, you know, I, I got to my 40s. I've never been married. I don't have any children. Um, So whereas a lot of people I know, even my, you know, my guy, he was married for 12 years. He got married young. He has kids and this and that. So I saw the peace and doing for myself and being by myself. So I'm not very argumentative or confrontational because when I see people that are, I fly back into this was so much easier on my own. You know what I mean? So I just don't enjoy um, confrontation with people. Therefore, I'm not going to be a confrontational woman. You know what I mean? I just want somebody who gives me that calm energy back. Exactly. I mean, it's it's all about peace. You know, either you want peace. I, have, I can't tell you the last time I was in an argument. I don't argue. I just, I don't do that at all. Um, years. Either we're going to sit down and talk like adults. You know what I'm saying? Because you get nowhere with these arguments. Um but yeah, it's for me, it's about just protecting my peace. So far, as, as we get close to the halfway point, uh, a lot of what I'm hearing uh, from both sides is uh, it's not necessarily right or wrong, but this is more about age and experience. I, I think so. And uh, youth is failing then. What were you going to say? 
age, experience, and passion because there there are those who confrontation is uh, is second nature. It took me a long time to get out of to get out of um, being kind of confrontational. Ooh, I said that. Me too. How many, I mean, how many, how many syllables? I mean, I didn't lose that till probably I tested for my black belt. And then once I was there and the years of training, I it takes a lot to get me to that point. I mean, that's Especially in an met. argument. That's when you, you and know? me met when I was when I was when I was going there. Mm -hmm. uh, you you tried to push me to the edge a few times. <laughs> I tried and didn't know that my ass was on the line. <laughs> you could have killed him. <laughs> But that's how crazy I was with with love. It, it, uh, so I think some people just have the passion to be confrontational. So um, even at a, at age, you know, if it's in you, it's in you. I still to this day work on managing me. That guy who I was was embedded, and so she exercises a lot of patience with me at times. I have to, I, I, I shut down quiet a lot just to prevent from flying off. See, nowadays you can I, just I go want, back to that couch and do that sit and sit playlist that you're always talking about. See, I want, yeah, I, do that. I want, I want peace. And I'm gathered, I'm, 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 I'm getting there over all these years. I'm a whole lot better than I was back in 2001. A whole lot. Well, better. we all should be better. Absolutely. Than what we were back in 2001. But you definitely are. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can attest. You definitely are a better person. So, hey, number 13 <clears throat> was, and, and I want to know how many of y'all women have used this. Oh, I'm so sorry. My battery is dying and, as an excuse. That way, if the uh, connection got uh, lost on the phone. <laughs> Are you stupid or something? Never. I don't even like it. using that with, with anybody. Nobody's ever used that one? Like lying that it that it that it happened? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because when I say it, that's actually the truth. It's yeah, the truth. Yeah. 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 She she meant I mean, it I in have a said those way. words, but it was true. Yeah, she meant it as a lying way in case it was uh the the conversation wasn't right. That way, she could just click off and not have to be bothered. Oh, um, wait a minute, but but wait. Let me look. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it this way. If you look at the age brackets that we're in right now, how many of us really are even involved in the age bracket of people that actually would even exercise something like that? Right. I don't. The people I naturally typically deal with, if they're saying that, it's because it's fact. I don't have to hang up the phone and go. Hmm. Bet you show sure about to go get on PlayStation instead of staying on the damn phone with me right now, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm more or less. I'm more or less thinking about you know the truth of it all. You know, we may not do these things now, but have we done them before? Or have we known somebody that has done it? You know, in in all these categories. I don't think that. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for everybody, sorry, but I'm thinking in our age bracket and then just based on what I'm learning from everyone just in this time frame here, it doesn't seem like anybody in this circle right here even is in the situation of even surrounding themselves with people that are like that in the first place. I'm damn near 60. I don't have time to sit on the phone and tell, and tell somebody, oh, although my battery reads 75%, I'm down to three. I'll talk to you later. I agree. I do think that I do think that it um, the topic is more for probably younger women or younger people Man. because I'm 52. I I don't have a I'm, I'm like I'm not lying to nobody because if I did it or if I said it, I'm stand on it. Like I'm not gonna lie about anything. Now have I lied? Of course. I mean that's a human condition. Kids lie, men lie, women lie. Everybody has lied in their life, but you know, you do get to a certain age where I'm not, there's no reason for me to lie. If I say no, I mean no, or if I, you know, whatever I say, I mean it. 
So and if and if we put ourselves back at the age group that this is actually talking about, we didn't have cell phones <laughs> we didn't anyway. Have so. cell phones anyway. <laughs> That's true. I mean, right. shit. So, yeah. so, so the answer is no. We have never said that when we were that age group because we didn't have a phone that ran out of battery. Yeah, I didn't get I didn't get your page because my pager, the double A battery, and my pager wasn't going off because I didn't get the page. Oh. Because basically, if I if I am to the point where I don't want to talk to you on the phone, I'm just going to tell you that I'm not going to talk to you no yeah. more. Call me, and I'm going to block you if you keep calling. Like you know. So yeah. Well, as we get to the halfway point the uh of the first half number 15 was uh have you have you ladies ever told your man your friend is handsome and in what way did you mean that i haven't just because i that's one of those things that's a respect thing for me i don't know it's kind of rude i don't know i just don't feel the need to talk about you know your your friends and how cute they are I think if, if that's said to a man, it's trying to get a rise out of him and not in a good way. That's like manipulation. So, yeah. Because if that was said to me about one of my friends, then you're going to always be thinking, oh, it's a problem. Yeah. Friend. yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. I said about a guy on TV. Never well, yeah, because we can't get all. access to them, you know, but <laughs> exactly. like friends. Friends my heavenly husband. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at Kaz right now I'm... man I used to tell her a prince comes to this door I'm, uh, he, I'm, I'm slamming it right in his face I think he's the man, one if he's dude coming could... to the door now we got a problem I yes. think I think he I think he's the one dude that could come to this front door and I have to make sure her ass is back upstairs <laughs> you get back upstairs I'll show you Jehovah's Witness <laughs> No, but in all well, honestly, they were talking about dig if you will. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but that would never happen. Okay, uh, we are live here on the Slightly Warped Podcast with Rick and Big Show, joined with our panel today, talking about thirty lies that she will tell you. And so far, not all of them is the truth here, um, and it is based heavily on mindset age and experience and from what i'm hearing this is a young girl problem not an experienced woman problem uh, am i right so far i would say so yes this one this is this is going out to all y'all women and i ain't even gotta ask if it's true because i know damn well it is i'll be ready in five minutes <laughs> well you know what actually truth be told it's true here it's this, true here it's too. true it's true here if she I, if she says five minutes typically she beats me dressed that's what yeah. i was just about to say yeah i ain't gonna lie when i say it's gonna be five minutes you probably count 15 or 20 because i ain't gonna be ready <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. being true yeah it, something comes to mind it wasn't a woman it was a dude that uh i used to know and he was always late everywhere and, and you know, he, you would call him on his cell phone. I'm pulling up in the parking lot right now. He about four blocks away talking about I'm pulling up in the parking lot right now. That was the first thing that popped in my head. Cause you know, we're all guilty of it at one point or another anyway. Um, I know I I've done it. If my wife was here now, she'd tell you that, you know, it's more me than her as well, but it's a pride standpoint thing for me, I guess. You know, I, I like to look good. I like to be ready. And, and if I'm going to say five minutes, it probably will take me five or ten minutes more than that because, you know, I want to make sure I'm right before I walk out the door. Now, mm -hmm. if we're, like, going somewhere, you know, like out to eat, and I say I'd be ready, for, that's different. Uh, you know, I, might, I may not be five minutes. But if it's an appointment, or I have a meeting with somebody. Yeah, I'm definitely on time because oh yeah, when yeah somebody's I late being to an appointment. Time. That irks the hell out of me because no, they no. don't it, they if, don't appreciate my time. If you're on time, you're already late. That's the way I'm, I feel I'm, about an appointment. When I was working, I had to be at work at least a half hour early. I just had to be. 
the, the day cannot start with me walking in the door and going straight in and clocking in and, and going. Couldn't happen. Couldn't happen. I hate being late. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I hate anybody that affects my time. I would agree with that. Hey, number 17 on the list. You deserve someone better than me. Have any of y'all ever told that to somebody? You can't get any better. <laughs> I have, and it was a lie. I was just, yeah. <laughs> I've said it too. <laughs> I think okay. a lot of these things that 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 the lies that women tell, it's it's because at some point we just we don't want to hurt feelings. You know, like we're, we're always trying to like we just sometimes can't feel that we can just be blunt like we want to let people off the hook as easy as possible because i've definitely said that and it was a lie yeah yeah i'm gonna go but off i didn't want to hurt i didn't want to hurt his feelings you know i'm gonna go off scale here real quick because i want to pop a question to y'all that um is not part of these but you brought that up so i want to ask is it better to be blunt or is it better to try to uh, soften the blow? I mean, really, in the long run, for real, for real. I it depends, depends on how sensitive they are. Her. Exactly. It depends on the person. Yeah, define the relationship between the two people. Uh, I, I that... At this age, I'm very blunt. I don't sugarcoat. I don't, your feelings are your feelings. This is true. Um, See, I mean, I'd rather somebody be up front with me because you know, what's the point in bullshitting around? Um, if you got something to say, say it, you know? But if someone, if a, if a woman says that to a man, that right there, that, I mean, I mean, that she's telling you, I mean, that's, um, I mean, yes, it might be a lie, but it's also, okay, she's not interested in me. Like, it should be like a huge hint, but yeah. Yeah. You get to a certain age and it's just like, no, I'm not feeling you. So there might be somebody out there better, but probably not. I think what it comes down to is the person. So if it's the girl talking to the guy, I think it's based on the guy. If he has put himself in a position where she just simply can't come out and just say ABC, then I think the circumstances dictate what she needs to do, has to do. So if she's got to go blunt with it in order for him to get it, then she needs to go blunt with it and let him get it. If she, if he's not, I don't know what word to use. I don't know, aggressive, not aggressive, but uh, if he's more docile or laid back about the situation, but she still needs to say it, then maybe you would pull back on the way you, way you communicate it. But I think the woman still needs to say what she's got to say. And he needs to be man enough to absorb whatever it is, truth that she needs to put down. So she needs to be blunt. He apparently, under most circumstances, needed to hear it that way. This comes back again, though, to age and experience, though, too. So I'm 40, so I'm in that age range where I can date 40 to 50 or even late 30s. Um, I handle men very differently who are older than me than I do somebody who's like 39. Um, I just think they're not always... And I'm not saying everybody, um, but you've seen cases of, you know, men killing women because they couldn't have them and this and that. It's it's a fear these days. Dating is not the same. Um, and it really does depend on the age group that you're dating in. And that determines how you're going to talk to somebody or how you're going to deal with them. Yeah, I just seen a, a video today where lady standing outside the store. He asked for her number. She says no. He goes in the store and comes out and pours a whole gallon of half a gallon of milk over her head. Like it mm -hmm. is, the rejection is much different with men nowadays. Um, yeah. But sure. then you're talking about men with, um, I don't want to say small or large egos, but um, just immature. That's a maturity mm -hmm. factor for men. I agree. Yeah, there was times back in the day when I was younger and I was called a bitch because he tried to get my number and I said no. And then you're called a bitch or, you know, get cussed out or whatever. And it's just like, oh, okay. Like, so I never yeah. understood that. I, I, I've been around guys that did that. I never understood that. Never understood that. No. Um, moving on to, uh, what was it? Number uh, 18 here. 
I want to know, because she said, I won't change you. Quote, I won't change you, end quote. Have any of y'all women ever tried to change a man? Sure. I think yeah. most mo women do. Uh, let, let me let me speak on a little bit further because I want to go in depth. Is it more change for the better or is it more manipulation? No, I think it's for the better. For the better, more encouragement to, you know, be better and do better. Mm. See, I didn't have to do it so much with you, though. She didn't say she didn't know. have to do it. She just said not so much. <laughs> well, you know what he was like back then that that I needed do. to change. So that was for the better. But as far as like who he is, no. And I think, again, it depends on the personality of the female because it goes both ways. A, a male who is a controlling person is going to manipulate you to change the way they want you to act. A woman who's a controlling person is going to manipulate you to for you to act the way she wants you to act. It really right. depends on that individual. And I don't think that's a cross the board type answer. Will y'all uh, check your man's phone? I never. Have. I feel like a lot of women do. I feel like if I have that far with you i'm in the wrong relationship and i've always stood on that Debbie? i've only done it once i'll never do that again it was a big mistake well since she put it out there i gave her a reason to check it Damn! it's only happened once and i gave her a reason to check it her instincts told her right and although it was borderline. I heard Dr. Phil say something one time, and he said that if you're doing something with a woman that you wouldn't do in front of your wife or in front of your partner, then that means it's wrong. So what I did was not right. So her instincts was right that time, that one time, and it was scary. I mean, if you have transparency, if you have a man that never hides his phone, leaves the room, leaves it open, there's no reason to do to check the phone. Um, that's you know, that's his personal phone. Like it's not. It was. It was the me. business. It, it was the business that I was in. Oh, I'm. I'm not referring to your situation. Well, no, no, but I'm saying my my circumstances because I, I didn't hide my phone or put it down, you know, or 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 tuck it under the pillow, or whatever, but. The circumstance that I stirred up was the circumstance that I was in. So, yeah, and sometimes all it takes is once. So, I survived that that spiral. And we are having really bad storms here. Yeah, it's a great storm here. Is yeah, it I mean, started there in Topeka? Are, yeah, the sirens are going off. My dogs are tripping out. Like he's over here shaking. Like it's really bad. Ooh, yeah, it got really running. dark over here. All right, we're going to run oh, through these last says, few really quick, you know, keep y'all safe. Jeff County, Jefferson County got a tornado warning two minutes ago. That's what Channel 41 says. Yeah, let me check because uh, this is the second time the warning, the sirens have went off. Are you, Are you upstairs? County? I'm all the way upstairs, like on the top. Mm. Mm. And it doesn't say tornado, so. You guys are so calm. <laughs> We're the Midwest. It doesn't yeah, yeah, but she's used to it. To it. <laughs> I was out there once, and I was frightened. Oh, man. There, there was a tornado that whipped through uh, Wyandotte County Lake, and we were out on the front porch watching it as the helicopters were taping it on, on screen. So, I mean, that's just... Mm -mm. I, I actually that. live at the peak of the city, so I'm on the very top of the hill of the city. And this area was wiped out, I don't know, probably 60 years ago from tornado. This entire area was wiped out. So it is pretty we, dangerous up here. We have some. We've had more than normal. Yeah, there, there is more out here. It's and we getting, had our second earthquake it's more recently. Out here than, so. Where are you guys at? New Jersey. Jersey. Okay. We had a 4.8 a couple of weeks ago. I, when I moved out here, man, and we had a tornado warning, I told her, it's a tornado warning. We need to go downstairs. She's like, mm -hmm. I run back to bed. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a tornado. 
And I said, it's in New Brunswick. And New Brunswick like 10 minutes from here. It's in New Brunswick. Oh, okay. Well, just let me know. I was like, oh, get up. That's like them people in California when the ground start tripling, they just like going about their business. All of the tourists are like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. We had a 4.8 out here a couple weeks ago. I looked up at my doctor. I'm like, is that an earthquake? We just sat where we were and kept it moving. Yeah, the okay. one in a couple of days ago was pretty bad. I'm I'm kind of stuck in the Bermuda Triangle. I'm not getting any rain or bad weather out this way. So <laughs> that's why I hear you don't get nothing out there. Lucky how, are you, man. how are you around a farm and, and and there's like no weather out there? Using the sprinklers. Ooh, wow. Remember though, we don't have a water bill because we don't get the city water. Oh. We've got the well to generate everything. There you go. Yeah. I don't like city water anyway. I hate the taste of chlorine. Yeah. Yeah. We don't got off topic. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> All right, hey, let's... um, this one was funny. I think it was number 21 on the list. Uh, I'm sorry, I sent the wrong text. Never. And she made a good point. How the hell are you going to send the wrong text to somebody? If First of all, to make the text, you're doing nope. something. And nope. if I'm correct, it doesn't matter whether you got an Apple, a Samsung, whatever kind of phone. You got to push somebody's name first and then put the message before you hit well, send. If but if you're texting with multiple people, that's easy to do. No, I've I've done it. I've done it texting between my wife and my mother. And I texted with my mother and then Debbie texts me. And so I sent a text to my mother and it was at 10 seconds of time that went by and Debbie texts and then instead of opening her text back up it opened up my mother so I typed my message to my mother what I was typing Debbie and I was like oh mama sorry and then they didn't mean to use those those words sorry so it happens it, it, it's happened to me now as far as the derogatory side of things mm, I don't know. I don't know. I, I wish you had had some younger people on here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, as I kind of wish we would have too now that I think about right. it. Right. But here's the thing I, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place because all I know is sensible people. I don't know too many young folks. And as we got what through number five on the list, I realized this is not a really good list for this panel because everybody here's got some sense. Um, this sucks. So you let him do that, man? Damn. <laughs> That's because he knows he, he knows our next sons. episode will be based on a serial killer. So, you know, we'll get those ratings back up. We should have got all the kids involved. That would have picked one of one of each. One uh, of we'd be, we'd one, be on one here daughter. forever. What about women that say, I don't get along with other girls? I've heard this before, too. Is that true? Yes. Well, what? Say that it says to me that she's a problem. You didn't oh, mean see, <laughs> <laughs> I never got along with women in high school. I had no female friends. I, I'm sorry, I take it back. I had one or, one or maybe one or two. The men were just nicer. Mm -hmm. Women were bitches. <laughs> Always wanting to fight and steal other people's men. Ow. I never had any any dealings in that stuff. A lot of male friends. I always wanted to have more female friendships, but yeah, I just I wasn't liked too much by females. And I mean, unless they took the time to get to know me, but just right off the bat, yeah, yeah, me too. I think I can only really women. think of one when you lived in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think. They, it was a lot of jealousy in high school, and because I did have a lot of male friends that were just friends. You know, so that just brought a lot of complications. You know, if they liked him or whatever, and you know, we were hanging out or talking mm -hmm. and lunch or whatever, yeah, it just brought a lot of complications. But I was a tomboy, so I just I naturally always just had more male friends. All right, as I we think, move further I'm down the list, go ahead, Kat. Women, I think women, women don't care to deal with drama that women can put out there. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. 
there there's drama that some women can can stir up and i think women have even less patience for the drama that women stir up than they do for the drama that we stir up my thing was maturity what's is that what's that that's what i mean by drama it's drama like growing up i always all of my female friends before i started went to high school were always four years or more older than me so i was a lot more mature than these 14 year olds going into high school so you were what they so, call old soul yes that's part of i was never like the one that went to the house parties i think i went to one in my life so, but tell me this because you know piggybacking off of what you were saying kaz and this is in my experience you know dudes can get into arguments with other dudes fights and they'll sit down the next day and have a beer together or whatever women when they get mad at other women Oh, hell no. They are not speaking for weeks, months, years, maybe in eternity. And they bring other women into it, too. Yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hey, how about this one? Uh, it was number 28 on the list. I'm a very simple woman. Is there a such thing as a simple woman? There is. We're not all near oh. as complex as she tried to make it. I think once they're at a certain age, younger women are not that simple. I see. We're, I think, we're, we're I think back into that. Simple, I think mm -hmm. there are simple women, but that simple woman still has a complexity about her. So, Debbie is... Don't use big words. I get confused. Stop it. Get some help. Uh, <laughs> hey, I got it from Rich. I, I got the... I, got the, I uh, stay in trouble. I am, I, Debbie is simple. I don't have to buy rings. I don't have to buy necklaces. I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to. But to understand certain parts of her personality is complex. But I can sit, we can sit and watch a football game. We can sit and we don't have to go out and have a big ass, expensive ass dinner. We can sit on a recliner and, and eat some hot dogs. Simple. But. Yeah, why? I think that. I think that the whole questionnaire thing is for people that are dating and just newly in a relationship. Like we're all old, you know, you're in a long-standing marriage. I'm in a long-standing marriage. Rick, you're in a long-standing marriage. Sean has been in a long-standing marriage. Monique is in a long-standing relationship. Yeah. Newly, newly, newly long-standing. Well, you know, I mean, it's the first time I've seen you actually happy with a dude in a while, you know, mm -hmm. so you know, I know it's all going good. So it's just like, you know, try to answer these maybe when we were younger, you know, still searching, you know, trying to find, I guess. I think that's where she's talking about in all these lists of are they actual lies or not. Yeah, it probably would have been completely different answers across the board on a lot of these if we had done this 25 years ago. It almost causes us to try to relive. And I said, I'm down there 60. So that's like, what, 20s? 30s mm. yeah that's why i asked you bro i said are you sure you want me to join because i yes so like it was from a younger you know like none of that applied to me for the most part you know so i was just like you know okay but see this is why i can appreciate the conversation because if it had just been us dudes talking we probably we may have went there but we would probably have different answers or go in different directions to hear oh. it from a female's point of view, especially a female that has had experiences that knows what she's talking about and can speak on it as somebody who is sure of herself. You know, that makes a difference. Yeah. Young versus, you know, seasoned. I never call myself old, but, you know, seasoned. Seasoned. I like that. Hey, the last one on the list, and I guess as seasoned women, y'all can speak on this. She said, I've only been with X amount of men. Do you really have that conversation with your man? And do you nope. change nope. the number? Nope. I've never had his business. I don't yeah. have no number. I don't even yeah. And I don't want to know.
don't even. I don't even. And that's that. such a double you standard. It's a, and it's such a double standard because you know women they do lie about their body count. I'm sure because of society and you know men can brag all day about their body count. You know it's different. So I'm sure women definitely do lie. But at the and end of the day, none of your and business. ours are mostly inflated. Yeah, yeah, they are. You know. women can be too. Yes. Well, true. I, I think women would do that around and other women, but around the, around a guy, you probably wouldn't inflate that number. But if I was single in today's age and a, and a woman had a high body count, that's not attractive to me. No, no. Yeah, I don't think it's attractive for a woman to be with a man at this age that has a high body count either. Like, it's you know. not cute. Men think it's cute. You know, some men do. I That's not attractive. Boys I, may think it's cute. I yeah, don't think boys. men yeah. do. Yeah. Well, see, sure. I, I appreciate all y'all coming on and we're going to have to get together and do this again. Only this time we're going to have some questions geared towards us men. Because like I said, uh, it, it is no way a female bashing thing. This gets to the heart of things. This enjoyable conversation because, you know, we, we learned what just a couple numbers deep into this that, you know, this is more for the young hood rat. Nobody that... uh has experience in life right. so it, it definitely makes a difference plus i'm gonna have to get on my a game and come up with some real crazy hard stuff when we talk about men because i gotta find some stuff that you know is really wrong or bad about us because we're such great guys <laughs> anybody got anything before we get out of here Closing comments, arguments. I'm a great, I'm a great guy. That's, that's two great guys in the house. Look, I'm an so, asshole. I, I I claim it. That's yeah, the I know, right there. So I know what I am. So I mean, I can be great. I can also be an asshole, and you know, majority of the time it's an asshole. But that's why people love me. But you I'm notice a lovable I didn't look, asshole. You notice I didn't look at the camera when I said that. I can't lie. I'm a great guy. You mean like when you're yeah. bashing my dolphins? Yep. Well, they suck. Yeah, they do. Uh, did we beat y'all in the wild card? Oh, and in yeah, London? Yeah. But Rich can't talk. <laughs> uh, wait. That. Hey, I beat the Chiefs. That was my Super Bowl, unfortunately. There you go. Yeah, yeah once yeah. every 10 to 15 years, you got us. <laughs> I'll job. take what I can get. Ruin your Christmas. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, Shauna, it's good seeing you. I don't know if you remember me. I think I met you once. We've met way, before. Way back in the early two thousands, you were you were at the uh, at at Joe's house. Oh, God. Now you got to imagine it without gray hair. Uh, he was bald. Where were Probably you? Probably mine. My uh, house. Yeah. Because at the time he was dating Susan's sister. I remember. Yeah, I remember. That was really cool. Thank you, show. That, no problem. I mean, we're being the honest here. Right? The way you said it was just nice. Thank you. Yeah. You know. Shauna, Monique, Debbie, Monique, great Monique, having y'all. Great meeting you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. Right. Yes, thanks, ladies, for coming on. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Good time. meeting you, Monique. Yeah. Next time, bring somebody crazy so we can. Have something dramatic happen. You know what? I mean, I, he did. She was just behaving. <laughs> Do y'all know anybody? Because you can invite them. It is okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because oh, I know somebody. Bring him on. Oh, yo, okay. yo. Let me. We get Joe on here. You want to get Joe on here, Rich? We'll get oh, get no. Joe on here. <laughs> no. He said no. no. Hell no. <laughs> Guess that would be a negative there. Um, no. If my vote counts for anything, nah, <laughs> no. Hey, yeah, because oh, um, you guys should think about doing one on the whole thing that's you know going viral right now, um, bears versus men. I think that would be. A I good heard time. that today, and you know, to me, that 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 goes back to where we are now. You know, the mature, sensible person. You know what they're going to pick? What versus least. men? It's a bear versus men. How, how does it go, Shauna? Basically, it's um, okay. So I'll ask you, Brian. So if you, if if your daughter, if you had a choice 
for it. So let's say your daughter is in the woods and, and she's all by herself, but you, there's a choice. Um, what would you, where, what is it? Would who you would rather, you rather her have, be there? Would you rather be there with a bear or another man or a man? Like who would you want her to be stuck there with a bear or a man? Is the bear hungry? It, it, it's, it's just bear or man. Bear. Bear. And that, exactly. And that's because that is a lot of men's response and women's response, but it's brought up a whole discussion. Here's the thing. Why that is. The bear going to kill you or he's going to go away. Period. There's Not no necessary. two ways about it. Not necessarily. Not, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. no, that's, but that's, that's the natural instinct. A man can hurt you in so many different ways. Do you want to subject the woman to that? Well, he could. But the point you, is not even about you. the bear. It's not about the bear. It's about the man and why. And why we decide that we would rather have a vicious animal next to our Absolutely. daughter versus mm -hmm. a human being that can create compassion. Because Absolutely. men are assholes and they are capable of very bad things. And, I, and as men, we don't. That's want why I said the man can hurt bullshit. you in several different ways. Yeah. Like but it does bear. bring a very good. I mean, that's a very good topic on why people think that. Ooh. Yeah. Guys, I don't want to be rude, but I got to No, you're off. good. Y'all were just saying how much you hate people being late, so I can't be late for this No, point. don't yeah. be late. Nice don't be you. late. Is this your last one? See you, Mo. Yeah, just, it was just a suggestion, that's all. Just because it's like a, a, a big topic, and every time I've asked Amanda, uh, it's always the bear. What did you What did you say? But you know what? But you know one of the other reasons men pick it is because we also can reflect on how we were and also how we can reflect on the other guys we grew up or around too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've got some good guys that I circle myself with, but I also know that some of those guys used to say things that I completely disagreed with. And you think about some of the thoughts that these guys have said, and I'm like, and I think of some of the things that I've done and I'm like, I have a compassionate heart, but I have been mean. I have been disrespectful before. I'm not trying to be an ass. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to be an asshole. It just comes natural. Oh, um, uh, but you know, a, a bear can protect the, ki the the daughter, and so can a man, right? The bear can eat the daughter, so can the man. The bear can kill the daughter, so can the man. The bear ain't gonna fuck my daughter, and that's right. what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it just really brings up the fear, you know, the, the there's a real fear there. And I, it, I think it's a great subject that does need to be talked about. Now, there's a lot of men who have come out and said on social media, you know, they're pissed off. They're so mad, like, you know, but there is a real reality of violence when it comes to women, period. So and women are trained and, and, and well, I can't well trained, taught, um, you know, how to not be a victim. Instead of us as societies Absolutely. treating our men not to be victimizers. Yeah. yeah. But you there's know. times when we don't realize that you guys are the way you are and we become victims. I've been trapped. No, no, I get there. that. But you but you've been taught as a young lady on how to protect yourself from those, whether it happens or not, we're not teaching the young men as they grow up to not treat women that way. You right. know, women are 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 seen as also from a society. Young age. I mean, yeah, from and, music right. to TV to I mean, the violence you're, against women is crazy. You're more of an object versus a a person in a young male's boy's eyes. You know, that's just sometimes it's uh, what they see at home too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. All the way around. Which we're going to have this show as well. You know, just the blatant. You know. uh Stuff that's in your face in society, especially, you know, when it comes to, you know, the things that come in music and, and Hollywood and how all that crap, you know, like P. Diddy and all that crap that's happening, you know, the stuff that's blatant in your face that people just accept it. You know, just before I, before we go, just one thing. I watched your um, podcast um, about the serial killer dude. That's yeah. that dude. And I remember you said I would rather have my kids be, you know, be in this era than in the 60s and 70s because you know people could hitchhike but in my thought I, absolutely not like do you know how much sex trafficking is going on now like it's so much on a higher level like we didn't have the crimes back in that we do today 
So yeah, he got away with you know the things I'm, that he got. I'm going to be with. honest with both of y'all. We did. The we same did have those. But then again, it was probably as it, it probably was as, as as strong back then as it is now. It's just that now it's more open because yes. there's so many other ways of communicating out there. The, the 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 reach is so far out there that I mean, just like with the Diddy thing. I mean, all it took was one girl to file a suit. Mm -hmm. And now you got TD Jakes and all this stuff, and, and, and then can't open. Uh, uh, so I think back in the '60s, shit was happening. It just it wasn't on well, social that's, media. That's why I said on that podcast too, sis, is that the predators had to change the way that they pray. Right, you know? but I just walked outside all day and rode my bike all around the town, and you know what I mean. Like I couldn't, even, I can't even let my granddaughter do that now. Right, because the predators have changed. They were, you know, they they were, they were they were kidnapping kids and they were killing them and all that stuff back then. Now they're selling them for traffic, killing them later, you know. But they're now they're selling them into a sex trade or whatever. So it it's a, it's the same thing, but different way to prey on them. If that that's my point yeah. of view on it. It was how the camera though. Like like the serial killers that are prolific back in that time cannot do that now. There's no that way they can get away with it. And camera. I'm going to you know, tell y'all exactly why it's happening more now and 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 you may not realize it because the way things are set up in society they are things that are put up in front of our faces to detract and deter us from a lot of things that are going on that we don't know about sure absolutely so are things sure things are worse than now? we are led to believe yeah, but are you sure it's happening more now? We just didn't know. There was no social media back then. There, it, Stuff happened. There, there's an argument the for that as well. Mm -hmm. But like I, Ryan I, said, I, you got to change your game if you're going to do this, that, and the other now because the, the eye in the sky is on you just about everywhere you go. I mean, just look at, I mean, if you, I'm a, I'm a crime documentary junkie. I kind of like that stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, the era of serial killers was the 70s, late 60s, 70s, and early 80s. That was the era. Why were they so popular, you know, or whatever? It's because it was easy to get away with. You know, we if, if sex trafficking fine. was that way back then, we would have known about it. I'm sure it still happened. Don't get me wrong. Because most of those sex trades were prostitutes being pimped out in New York and them big cities. You know, the same thing. You know, I'm I'm going to L.L.A. to become a movie star, but then I end up becoming a, a, a prostitute. You know, that stuff happened in the 70s, you know. I guess for me, it just felt safer back then. It just it just it felt was safer. it was because I was actually thinking about <clears throat> I was probably third grade. And I remember my father in third grade sending me on my bicycle three blocks away to the grocery store across the main drag. To get him a pack of cigarettes mm -hmm. in, in third grade. Oh yeah, all the time. No, I, re I remember that, but didn't think about that same time frame when all those Atlanta children were being snatched. You know, at first they still kept the kids going, but then it became a problem. Y'all remember the at ten o'clock? You know, uh, do you know where your children are at? That commercial yeah. that used yeah. to come on. It comes you know, on all... eleven. It comes on eleven o'clock here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but that's how it was. You know, why did that start that? Because. Oh crap! There's a bunch of these kids being taken. You know, uh, yeah. the Adam, the Adam. You know, from the dude from um, America's Most Wanted. America's yeah. Most Wanted. You know, when his kid got snatched. You know, yeah, it, it, mm -hmm. it is out there. I do agree that we were, as children, more free back then. I don't necessarily think it was. But that's more also because our safe. parents didn't give a damn about us being outside all damn True. day. Exactly. They you had oh, to yeah. be outside all day. <laughs> there yeah. was come on when the porch, you know, when the street light comes on, you better the have your ass in the yard, on. you know. And yeah, and, and but other than that, is, I don't want to see your face. So we just we're, got were, were times yeah. more safe back then, or are the crazy people more bold now? I think mental health, mental uh Wellness is a lot worse now. And I think that comes from food, air, all kinds of different things. So I think it is worse as far as just, you know, the crazies. Uh, but I don't know. I just felt much safer back then. I don't know. 70s, it was, 80s. It was. It was. It was just. 
but maybe I was also just, you know, now I'm somebody who I don't leave the house. I'm carrying everywhere I go. So maybe it's just because I do watch all these crime shows. You know, back then I wasn't privy to, you know, what was really going on in the world. You know, I was just in my own little, you know, neighborhood bubble. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe it was the same and just, you know, different, different ways, like you said. Um, maybe that is what it is. And I, I think, go ahead. I would say when I got robbed in 2005, <clears throat> it made me start thinking about life. And I'm like, you know, I don't know how many people think about it, but there's a clock in all of our lives. Every circumstance out there, there's a clock. And at some point, unless you're blessed to not happen before you, before you pass, your time is going to come up. I have been in lots of situations before, but I have never ever had two guns pulled on me and robbed in broad daylight in front of my apartment. Broad daylight. And mm. I'm like tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And you know, I'll say this before we get out of here. Um I think this started happening first when I turned 49 or 50 back in the day. Um and I notice it more and more every year. You know how they say people, you, you meet less people in your life and you start to lose more. You know, that's when it started getting really prevalent for me. And, you know, you see all these celebrities that are uh, up and dying and stuff. And it's like, damn, I just watched the movie with such and such in it. Or, you know, I just heard the song with such and such on it. And, you know you just start to think about it and you know i recently was thinking about that again and it's like let's just say by the grace of god i live to be 100 100 it probably won't happen but still i've got more years behind me than i have left in front of me so you put a lot of things into perspective and it just makes you think Makes you appreciate what you got. My father put something in perspective and he talked about, he said, man, when you, he's 83 now. He was like, man, when you get my age, this is when you start looking back and you're like, who's left? Everybody's dying around me. And I looked at his family tree. I've been doing him on ancestry and <clears throat> his whole entire immediate family is gone. Everybody in his house from parents to younger, to, to all his siblings, are all gone. And then all his friends, I think he's got one or two friends left. And I'm like, I'm looking at this, and I started counting at all the people that I've lost, friends or buddies, and I'm like, wow, we're getting up there. Yeah. We're getting up there. So appreciate what you got. All right, again, I appreciate y'all for coming on. We're going to get out of here, but we will be back with another one real soon. Like, share, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Hit me that thumbs up when you're on any of our podcast feeds. Big show, as usual. Take us on out of here. Take us out of here, show. Thank y'all yeah, for... Love you, sis. Love you, too. Love you, you sis. There. Love you, sis. <laughs> hey, yes, Love you, sis. Let Joe do his thing. <laughs> hey, just thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for watching. Uh, like always, tell the people that you love, you love them. Tomorrow's now promise. Take your PTO today. See you next week. Later. Later.